Um, perfect. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it off uh, to Chris. Thank you uh, for joining us, Chris. Um, we're super happy to have you here. Bonjour tout le monde. Merci. Thank you, Stacey, for having me. Um, my name is Christopher Britt. I'm the Associate Director Education here at uh, the Downey Winjack Fund. Um, my background is I'm mixed Métis and settler. Uh, I've been a teacher and a vice principal in a variety of capacities, starting in a private school out west, uh, teaching in university in Ontario, and then being um, an uh, administrator in a First Nation school on uh, uh, unceded Little Watt territory, which is where I'm coming from you today. So, I live and work on the unceded uh, lands of the Lilwa people, which is just north of um, Vancouver, about two hours in the mountains. And I was fortunate enough to work and live in this community for a while until I got a chance to join you all today. Um, and so my work predominantly with the Downey Wenjack uh, is to extend and get our resources for teaching about reconciliation and residential school history um, and all the things that we've put together for our teachers uh, in a national and on a national level. Uh, bonjour, Megali. I didn't know you were in here hanging out, but uh, I see one of my former colleagues is joining us today, so that's fun. Um, so just the flow of today is I'm going to do a bit of Q&A with you just because I like to get a bit of an understanding of who I'm talking to and kind of frame our discussion a bit. I'll get into kind of the details of the Downey Wenjack fund and how we started and where we are going. Um, some pretty exciting things are coming uh, in the future with us with regards to our educational offerings. So I'm excited to be able to extend our network deeper into Quebec uh, because we are in about uh, just under 7,000 uh, schools and groups and clubs nationally. And that represents about 9,000 educators, about 7,000 uh, school teachers, and that's about 20% of the teaching population in Canada, but our lowest uh, province is Quebec. And so anytime we're, we're very thankful to Stacey and her work with, with our Education Advisory Committee, which I'll get into a little bit later, um, and inviting me in here to chat with you. Um, but without further ado, I'll kind of jump into it. And uh, thank you for your patience. And there's a little bit of a miscue on my end. Um, but I'll do a bit of a QA, and a uh, And I don't know if you've used Menti before. But um, it'll, you can feel free to jump in and, and answer in the chat, or you can use Menti, and I'll show you how to how to use this. And I'll just share my screen here. So uh, you can join at menti.com on your phone or your computer, or you can just popcorn it and yell at me in the chat, or you can put it in the chat on the screen. And I just want to get a feed... Uh, have some feedback on what grounds you as an educator in your capacity, if you're an administrator, school teacher, uh, special ed counselor. What what brings you here? Yeah, and if you go to mentimeter.com and use the code, you'll be directed into this one. And then all our responses will populate so everybody can see it. Great start. Yeah. Honesty of the students. Like that one. Yeah, Roots, I come from a family of educators, um, or perhaps it's teaching your community that grounds you. If you don't want to use Menti, you can also just use the Zoom meeting chat. I got both of them up. Yeah, working with my community, of course. Building those lasting relationships. Sense of purpose. Yeah, the genuine enthusiasm. meeting the needs of students and staff. So feeling kind of vocational purpose in education. I think a lot of us would probably resonate with that. Co-creating, yep. There is something beautiful about, you know, the difficulties of uh, collaboration and the, and, the, and the wonderful things that it uh, develops. Meeting the needs of students and staff, building relationships. This is all beautiful. Joy, yeah. 
there are days that are hard, but then there are some amazing, amazing moments. Community relations. Yeah, surrounding kids with love and unconditional positive regard and making a difference for positive changes. They're beautiful. <clears throat> Lovely. This is great. Thank you so much for sharing. I, I like to get this because um, it oftentimes I, I present and I do these presentations throughout um, Canada leading with love. Yeah, sometimes that can be hard. Um, I don't know if anybody hears in this call that is worked in kind of spec ed or um, in communities that uh, have more difficulties than others. Uh, it can be difficulty walking into the into the building every day with the you know, love first, but uh, it's the way you got to do it. And I want to kind of remind everybody that, um, you know, as we move and we talk about what Downey Wenjack works on, this is obviously sensitive topics. You know, we're in education for the students, for our community. And unfortunately, the, um, you know, the flagship book and the major story that we use and generally kind of the starting journey of everybody's kind of reconciliation journey is accepting that, you know, there was a systematic elimination of children through an educational system. Um, and for us as teachers, that is an unfathomable reality. Um, but unfortunately, it is a reality in the educational system that we live and work in. And it's and, you know, we can bring ourselves to the late uh, Justice Murray Sinclair in his mention of, you know, education got us into this. Uh, it was the system that kind of um, caused this, but education is also going to get us out. And so these chats and this time that we're spending together and how you move forward with love for both your students and for yourself, which is super key as an educator, um, making sure you're showing yourself the same amount of love and grace and forgiveness that you give to your students as you give to yourself. So with that in mind, we'll get into the next big question, which is what are some of the fears we have about teaching this content or, you know, what was what's the concern that you have? What um, sometimes we refer to as speed bumps or um, or uh, you know things that get in the way of of perhaps maybe taking a nervous step forward into teaching something that we're unfamiliar with. So what are some fears or concerns? Teaching it with respect, yeah, it's a great one. Retriggering students and community members. Yeah. The risk of re traumatizing multi generational survivors. Yeah. And sometimes these stories um, are not just uh, re triggering our Indigenous community. Uh, yeah, saying the wrong term, right? So knowing what, and language has been changing very rapidly as our um, it, larger Indigenous communities grow and, and gain their voice back. Um, there's debate about what language is and what words are appropriate. Um, and reminding ourselves that re-traumatizing uh, doesn't necessarily mean just our Indigenous communities with the you know, increased amount of new Canadians, the story of loneliness, the story of being subjugated to genocide or pain um, is a human story. And there's a lot of uh, students in our classroom who will have lived it or lived some component of it. So recognizing that, you know, talking about the, this um, this larger topic can be a triggering event for for more than just our indigenous community it can be a triggering event for just the human condition scared of doing it incorrectly misrepresenting information or being accused or cultural appropriating making it appropriate based on facts how much do we share how how do we share it teaching with respect yeah teaching in a way that's respectful to all yeah Finding the balance between doing the talking and listening. Always hard. That's a personal one for me. I feel more comfortable talking than listening. So I, and obviously in this presentation, I'm going to be doing more talking, but um, feel free to jump in at any time. Yeah, these are great. These are great. Yeah, we um, at DWF, we are, we're not the experts. Um, and, you know, this, this, this effort and reconciliation on an educational in an educational setting, this is something that's going to shift and change as we move through it. Um, but I like to think to my grandmother giving me a bit of advice when standing on the dock as a young kid before jumping into a lake. Um, she's kind of swimming there and kind of giving me some sass and reminds me of like, just, just be scared and do it anyways. 
Um, and this is kind of the way we as educators need to enter into teaching this content. It's tricky. You're going to make mistakes. Congratulations, you're human beings. We're all going to make mistakes. It totally happens. There might be a moment where you get it wrong. But we need to remember that we afford our students the luxury of make, making errors. And as teachers, part of the reconciliation journey is accepting that perhaps we are going to make an error, but moving forward in a good way and moving forward with an honest heart and doing what we can in the best way possible is the right way to do it. Now, if that's on the emotional side, let me put my administrator hat on. From, the administ from, from an admin perspective, if you want to protect yourself professionally as you enter into perhaps teaching content that you might be concerned about getting some feedback from parents or getting some feedback from administrators or other students or whatever, send your lesson plans and communication to your admin or your advisor, whoever your you know um, supervisor is. They probably won't send you an email back. They're probably going to be too busy. But you will pr protect yourself professionally by sending what you're going to do ahead of time to your administrator. You'll kind of get the jump on it. Um, that's my admin hat coming off. Uh, on the more human level, the reality of it is, is that this is a real story. And uh, our role as teachers is, and as ed educators is to be brave and um, enter into these situations and enter into this place of um, a real reconciliation, which means, you know, being brave to step in and speak about these larger events and being brave that sometimes you might get it wrong. When it comes to the re-triggering the students in community, for those of you who are working in community with a high Indigenous population, I would lean into who you have at that community to kind of realize what makes sense, right? Spend some time in advance communicating if you have a lead, if you have a teacher who's been in the community for a while, if you're close with any of the community members, sit down and kind of go over the lesson. If you have access to a community member, whether it's EA or an elder or whatnot, invite them in um, or sit down with your students prior to, you know, just sit down with the group and say, listen, part of my job, uh, if it's a shared community, similar to where I was in Pemberton, where we're about 50-50, you know, taking the time to sit with with the students from the community and say, listen, you know, the next topic in the next couple of weeks is is going to be this. And this is part of it. Um, what do you think about it? I'm thinking of this book. You know, we can you can bring in the story and give them the opportunity to you know what? A lot of the students uh, are very are very, very aware. And um, I think to my own community here in Pemberton, they're quite active and passionate. Uh, they, they were just like, you know, my grade 12 social justice class was just you know, I'm going to choose to do my math homework. I don't need to sit in here. And then I had dialogue of, well, there's going to be kind of a conversation about it. So if you're up for it, you can join. And you know your students the best. So, you know, really leaning into making this a conversation with them is our recommendation. Um, and we'll get into the specific, some of the specific resources uh, that uh, can kind of help with that. But that's that's lovely. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing it. Congratulations. You have my permission to make mistakes. Um, not that you needed it, but you have you have our permission. Go out there, make mistakes, learn, um, be human, and that's that's the way we're gonna that's the way we're gonna get out of here. Um, and so, with the last one, and I'm just going to jump to our last question. Um, why did we sign up for this workshop? What what do what do we want to get out of this? Because there's lots of ways I can kind of I can go with this. We have we have over 900 resources. Um, and we have a whole bunch of new things coming. So if you just let me know kind of what the goal was, what what's the what's the takeaway that we were hoping to get? Cool. Resources and best practices. Um, with regards to the best practice, I can give best practice on kind of the human component and the personal teaching component, but my recommendation is also kind of lean into your your protocol procedures and your community kind of, you know, it might require having an awkward conversation of do we have protocol and procedures around this? Have we engaged local community about um, teaching this content? Do we have a connection to the community that we share territory on? Um, and sometimes that's 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 where your educational system or school is at, and and um, you know choosing whether or not that's something you can take on is also an important thing for you to decide as an educator. But um, sometimes that's where you're at. How to incorporate it with my students? Yeah, okay. As an EA, yep. 
learn more about this subject. Yeah. So the resources I'm going to send you will will be for those of you who are at the beginning of their truth and reconciliation journey. Um, these the first toolkit that we send for free once Canada Post figures its life out. We're in a little bit of a holding pattern because Canada Post is obviously impacting our ability to send out resources. But um, the first toolkit that we send out is 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 pretty it's pretty great to kind of start. It's a wonderful entrance point, and I'll get into that in a second. Yeah, take action. Uh, that's a great one. We at Downey Wenjack, our goal is to try to support you in your reconciliation journey as an individual teacher. And we also recognize that the goal is to try to ensure that people are moving forward in a way that is that is growth focused. So we try to measure our success, not by just who we sign up or, you know, our financial contributions. Um, if you have any questions about how and where we get funding or whatever, feel free. Uh, we're an open book. Um, but we also try to strive to have these larger conversations and to guide you as an educator um, toward engaging your class and engaging your community because truth and reconciliation generally starts with education and being familiar and then moving into finding a way to take action in your classroom and then perhaps taking action in your community. Uh, connect and see which resources I can share with my student teachers. Yep, that's perfect. Long to include tier and everything we do. Yes. Okay. So we have a lovely decolonizing the calendar, which we will talk about um, in kind of integrating not just the truth and reconciliation, but one of the calls is to integrate this type of history into our daily kind of educational pedagogy. So that means not just um, September and not just during our kind of larger weeks of truth and reconciliation week of secret path week um, or in June indigenous month, but um to try to include it in, in our day-to-day. -day. And we have a couple solutions and ideas for, for you as well. Great. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to get into kind of the who we are and then we'll get into some of the resources and the toolkits itself. Any questions? comments or any thoughts just before I kind of jump into a little bit more of uh, a little bit more talking you can feel free to interrupt and don't don't hesitate to ask questions if it comes up because you might think you'll remember it and then you won't and then you'll lie down in bed tonight and be like oh I should have asked this I had that this is the one thing I wanted to ask because I do that all the time so, um, yeah, I did a brief land acknowledgement. Uh, when we do these virtual ones, I I mentioned where I'm from, um, and I know we're I know we're kind of concerned with regards to a bit of time, but um, uh, I just want everyone to kind of take a moment to think about and consider where they're from, the connection to land with regards to where you're coming from or which community you find yourself in, um, and hang on. I get the right one? Yeah. Great. Um, and so just taking a moment to kind of remember and connect to where you're from or where you find yourself um, and recognizing that the relationship is beyond just just us and the people, but also the land that's been here and the creatures and everything we share and how that kind of guides our work and guides our connection. Um, just to kind of give you a bit of a backdrop, uh, we are called the Gord Downey and Cheney Wenjack family because we have permission and engagement from both of the families. So we were initially started by Gord, which was the lead singer of the Tragically Hip. Um, but we have both the Wenjack, which is four of... Yes, thank you, Stacey, for Native Land. Uh, Native Land was started by Connected North, who we actually partner with, and it's a really great resource to see which territory you find yourself on if you don't know. Um, but we have the support of both the Downies and the Wenjacks. Uh, we're pretty proud of being an organization that um, has engagement from kind of both sides of the reconciliation coin in Canada. Um, and so we have four of Cheney's sisters who are actively on our board. And one of them is also Cheney's niece. And then Mike and um, Mike and Patrick Downey are also on our board. So we have some pretty cool engagement. Uh, just a reminder that, again, this is sensitive topic. It affects us all in different ways. We like to just remind everybody to be 
be aware of their own kind of mental health, be aware of how they're feeling when we talk about this stuff. Uh, there's resources there for you. And if you do need to take a step back or a step away, you can, you know, connect with Stacy or you can connect with me um, at any time. And you can ask questions. So we're available all the time. And I also like to tell teachers that as we go through the resources, it's going to be a lot. There's a lot of stuff that we offer. Um, and so just know that uh, if you have any questions or you're looking for a specific resource, you can reach out to us. Sometimes resources are cross-provincial. We can offer something that might work in your region or it might work um, for your grade group. And then we would love if we can kind of build it out so that it works uh, on in Quebec. And then it's something we could perhaps offer elsewhere. Um, okay, so uh, our mission, our goal was pretty much, we were started by initially Gord's call to action close to the end of his life. The story with Gord is that in uh, around 2011, 2012, him and Mike saw an article from McLean's uh, in 1967 and it explained the story of Cheney Wenjack walking, um, trying to leave Cecilia Jeffries, Cecilia Jeffries residential school and freezing to death. Um, and it kind of caused Gord to feel compelled to do something. He wrote some poems, uh, which became his music, which became the Greater Secret Path book, which, which we'll get into. And he essentially um, completed that and he reached out to the Wenjack family because he decided, you know, before we move forward, I would like to try to find this community and I'd try to find um, any of the family members. And he actually called the Wenjacks and said, hey, listen, I'm Gord Downey, lead singer of the Tragically Hip. I've done this thing. And I would love to kind of share this greater story. And they told him that they've been really trying to get a hold of Oprah. And it would be really helpful if they could help them get a hold of Oprah. And he said, well, I don't know Oprah. I can't really do that. So they actually hung up on Gord Downey. Um, and nothing actually continued for a bit. And then one of the Wenjack's uh, nieces, I think it was, I think it was Jared, uh, who went to them and said, listen, you know, Gord is you know kind of a kind of a big deal and so the relationship built out from there but effectively the goals both the families came together and create the mission which is pretty much to try to ensure that there's increased in cultural cultural understanding between indigenous and non-indigenous people and our vision is to just improve the lives of indigenous people by building awareness education and connection so that's our goal um, like I mentioned before, uh, Cheney's story, 12 year old boy, he was trying to flee Cecilia Jeffries. He grew up in a Agoki post, which is where his, uh, sisters and most of his family still reside with a mixture and a spattering throughout Northwestern Ontario and Toronto. Um, he spent several years at residential school and he tried to make it home. And the initial story, the secret path book, which we send in the toolkit is Cheney's story. Um, board, like I mentioned, uh, at the close closing, um, moments of his life, before he passed on to the spirit world, his big focus was to try to ensure that Canadians did something. He was obviously pretty shocked. And like someone mentioned in the questions, they didn't hear about this in school, it wasn't taught. Uh, Gord was part of that generation as well, where this was new information to him. Um, and so uh, close to the end, when he was doing those final concerts, he he definitely kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, put the call out to Canadians to do something. And we've we've used that as our guiding kind of light with regards to what we do. Um, and so I gave a brief, brief story. Gord went up to the family. It was a pretty special moment. Um, and now we send out kind of the secret path book in honor of, of these two. So what do we actually do? Um, we run and the main the main thing that I'm talking to you today about is the Legacy Schools program. Um, this is what you're going to be available to sign up for. And I'll go through the registration. Effectively, educators get a principal toolkit completely free. It comes with the secret path book it comes with our decolonizing the calendar where we've removed colonial days of significance and metis indigenous indigenous and um inuit days of significance instead um, and that calendar actually links to our social media and we post lessons and ideas for your classroom through our social media and website that are connected to the calendar itself which you'll get in the toolkit the toolkit also includes our reconciliation action guide um, and a bunch of other resources uh, for you, including this little orange book. Someone mentioned the TRC, but we send out a little mini companion TRC document. Uh, you can get the entire toolkit in French as well, um, if you want it in French. Uh, I don't know, Stacy. I imagine there's probably some teachers that would maybe like two. We're open to sending out two to kind of um, get our uh, Quebec educators excited. So if that's something you want at the very end of the registration 
um, um, sign up, you'll see there's kind of a notes and you can just let us know that you're in this chat and be useful if you get both and we'll just send you both. Um, so yeah, it was established in 2018 with about 300 schools. The program is available to any educator. So what we've seen is initially when we were sending out the toolkits, um, people were people were encouraged to sign up, but it was only for one teacher per school. Now we send it out to everybody. So if you get your toolkit and once Canada Post decides to um, kind of figure out and the strike is resolved, uh, you'll get your toolkit. And if someone from your school sees it um, and is excited and likes what they see, then you can encourage them to sign up. So it's not just one educator per school. And it isn't limited to just regular school teachers. Uh, it's open to clubs, groups, post-secondary, anybody who works in education in any capacity whatsoever. So like I mentioned before, Secret Path book comes with a bunch of stuff. It now also includes a resource in there that links directly to our lesson plans. I'll get into those in a second. Um, but the other exciting thing is, is not only do you sign up and get like this initial booster kit, which is most of the things that you see in the image, um, you also get a new, you also get a new kit every year with a new piece of Indigenous literature. So we sent out Shishi Etko this year, which was written by Nicola Campbell, it was in both French and English. Um, and we actually had Nicola Campbell come and do a read along online with us. So when you sign up for our toolkit, you get access to resources and you also get access to our mailing list. Um, that kind of extends and gives uh, you the heads up of our other offerings like our DWF lives. And I'll, I'll show you what these look like now. So before I continue, I'm just gonna jump into the registration so that we, so I don't give you too many things all at the same time. So if we, how's the pacing? Am I talking too fast? We good? Yeah, it's a couple of thumbs up. Okay, cool. Everyone's still, no one's asleep yet. Anybody with their cameras off, lying down, half half asleep? Hey, I see you with your cameras off. Now, I'm just, I'm just gonna sit here, lying down and taking a breather and listening to this. You are totally allowed. Totally allowed. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's the website. I'm gonna encourage you, I'm gonna encourage you not to sign up right now because if you get into the sign up, the sign up takes about a couple minutes. So if you start getting in and start punching in your information, you're not gonna be listening. So I encourage you to sign up later. Uh, if you go to downywinjack.ca and you come into programs, you'll see legacy school and register and it'll bring you to this website. Gives you kind of the same information here. Um, again, that it's open up to everybody and you can sign up and do whatever you like. Uh, there's a bunch of other buttons. The register one is the key one. It's going to bring you down. Um, and we'll talk about these other things a little bit later. Kind of gives you a map of where we are, a brief video, kind of another explanation of the toolkit. This year, we've um, we've added a uh, like little tote bag and our resource um, kind of postcard. And if you come down, you see the sign up. Now, some of the questions might be applicable to you. If you get stuck, you can email me or just generalize as best as you possibly can. Uh, you'll notice at the end, it'll kind of provide any other relevant information. This is where I mentioned that it would be useful if you want the French and English. Um, the Secret Path book doesn't come in French. We are working in a direct translation, but to translate Gord's poetry and song into something that is representative is tricky. And it's been a couple of years in progress. Uh, I will caution teachers, the book has the word fuck in it. And apparently that rubs people the wrong way from time to time. I like to say that the book is about a traumatic experience of a child's youth. And perhaps the word fuck might not be the worst possible thing in that book, but just from a professional standpoint, um, yeah, it's in there. And so uh, be prepared if you have a parent or an administrator that wants to have a conversation about that. So that's our, that's our um, uh, sign up form. And yeah, it takes about a couple of minutes if you, you get stuck. Uh, oh, the last thing with the sign up with regards to your mailing address, I recommend you use a mailing address that is something that you are going to use regularly. So if you know that you're going to move around schools or you know that things get lost at your school, perhaps use uh, your home address, which is totally fine. We'll also send you kind of emails um, at the end of the year just to remind you that if you change locations to let us know. Um, so that we can actually jump back in and kind of correct it. Thank you, Stacy, for putting that in there. Okay, so let's continue with some of the extended programming so we have enough time to talk about specific resources. Great. Perfect. Um, 
Oops. So a couple things is the first uh, legacy school was about eight years ago. I have to update that. That was in Pickle Lake. Um, and when we engage with teachers, we always want you to kind of re-engage with us. Um, so what this is what we call reconciliation. action. Pretty much anything you do in your classroom, whether big or small or in your community, uh, kind of meets the aim of reconciliation. action. And I'll show you back on the website, there's actually a tab where you can submit that. Now we are much more engaged in socials with regards to Instagram, um, a whole variety of things. You can actually send us your reconciliation action via any of our social media networks. We really love to see what you're doing in your classroom. It helps us to showcase other teachers. Uh, it helps to showcase other schools. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, kind of, you know, benefits that it has. So we really encourage you to don't be afraid. Sometimes teachers, they're like, well, my students really didn't do what I thought they were going to do, or they didn't think it was good enough. It's all good enough. Doing anything and doing something is exactly what we want to see. So just know that we would love to see you reach back out and tell us. Um, we've had a variety of different types of reconciliation. actions. Sometimes teachers take pictures of their initial lessons. Sometimes it's integration with bringing in a um, Indigenous artist, which we have a program for that. I'll get to it. Uh, we've had students and teachers use our coding lessons. We've had students and teachers do our walk uh, for Wenjack, which is a kind of similar to a, a Terry Fox fundraising event um, that teachers actually take their students out and go for walks and count it and build a math lesson around it. And there's lesson plans and resources in that toolkit for that lesson plan. Um, and so the reconciliation action forms on the website, we'd love to hear from you, but we find that actually a lot of teachers are using our social medias uh, and they're actually using Instagram to communicate back to us. So we, we, um, we tend to do that. Um, okay, so uh, a couple of the things is we have Secret Path Week. So Secret Path Week is a national movement commem commemorating when both Cheney and Gord passed on. Um, we have a bunch of DWF lives which I'll show you on the website. And these are live videos with, um, or they're pre-recorded videos with indigenous artists. We did a really interesting one with Talon Pascal from Lilwat, where he talked about his bow making, flint napping and canoe building. And there's corresponding lessons to all those. Those are on our YouTube channel. You can watch them for free and there's corresponding lessons. Um, we also have access to free documentaries. These are kind of the major offerings during the Secret Path Week in October. And this is past, but it happens every year. And you don't have to do these lesson plans or share these lives in October. You can choose to do them whenever it suits you, right? September and October are very busy times of year for us teachers. So don't feel that, you know, as you sign up and you get all these emails for the things that we're doing, you have to do these during the time. We encourage you to do it at any time. Um, I mentioned a little bit about, about the Walk for Wenjack. This resource is in your toolkit. It kind of talks about how you can get the kids involved. There's a nice big poster to engage it and a QR code for lesson plans directly attributed to the walk. The Artist Ambassador Program. This is another thing that we offer in April. Once you sign up, you'll have access to this. We actually do a contest where you would win uh, an artist, an Indigenous artist, whether in person or virtual, to actually participate with your class one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and so you can actually, and sometimes the live sessions actually have active participation. So schools will actually, we're doing one with, um, Métis Santa in December, and we will have students actually get a chance to have questions with Métis Santa after he does a read along. Um, and so it's pretty cool. I would, I would kind of stay close to that sign up. Other things that we do is we have Indigenous History Month, very similar to kind of the September and October. We offer pretty much very similar things in June uh, with regards to a few DWF lives and engagements in your classroom. Um, if you have students who are passionate and engaged in this, we offer kind of a seminar for youth for which are from 16 to 24. Um, about 100 youth participate in seminars that are led by DWF staff, various artists, ambassadors, and mentors. Um, and so they get a thousand dollar honorarium. It's a really unique program. A lot of the, and the youth actually end up completing a reconciliation action of their own, which is pretty cool. So with that, I will jump into some of the specific resources. We're at 115. I have to, or sorry, 115 my time, but I have what, about 40 minutes, 40 minutes ish. No, yeah, I've we plan for that. 30 minutes. Okay, perfect. Okay. We're, we're on time. We're, we're, we're trucking along. Uh, questions, comments, or things that people have about, that was a lot about the different offerings. Anybody have any quick questions or want me to kind of clarify anything before I jump into kind of the resources? Okay, cool. So let's come back to the website.
Okay. So if we come back to the website, I showed you where to sign up, Legacy Schools. And if you want more explanation about the different programs, you'll see they sit all under here. Um, the one thing I didn't touch on was the Ushki Wapawan. This is new. This is our blanket fund. This actually offers funding for schools, communities, anybody who is working in anything with regards to reconciliation. There's different levels of the capacity building grants. So if your community is doing something unique and you're seeking funding, this is an avenue um, for you to consider. But the thing I wanted to focus in on was our legacy school resources. So if we come to the we come to the resource toggle and we hit this, there's kind of two. There's legacy school resources and there's lesson plans. Now, the legacy school resources include an, a very long and exhaustive list of lesson plans, websites, and resources for teachers to use. If you can't wait for your toolkit, you can jump in and get the digital toolkit one. So the actual calendar is here and available and kind of the quick access to our DWF lives, the channels, the Reconcilia Action Guidebook, the walk, and aussi en français, if you are teaching in French. Um, if you wanna look back at some of the past stuff, such as the residential school and the September 30th, or our National Truth and Reconciliation Day resources. There's a whole bunch here. And again, these are a mixture of lesson plans and uh, websites and videos. There is a lot here. In the event you don't wanna sit and scroll through absolutely everything, if you're looking for something in specific, you can just email us and we'll help you find it. Um, or if you're looking for something, you know, you're like, hey, I'm, more, I'm teaching a course perhaps similar to um, Social Justice 12 and I really wanna bring in the TRC. Um, you can just shoot us a message at Christopher at downywentjack.ca or Legacy Schools. Um, we have the Secret Path resources. So I just wanted to jump into one of them, which I think is a wonderful start. Uh, we have lots on the Secret Path. This is a combination of things that we've built with teachers. Uh, the Secret Path lesson plans for Manitoba. I think this is a wonderful starting point. Um, or the... Uh, Secret Path Lessons uh, and Artwork done by Mitch Champagne and our friends at Trent. Both of these are really lovely. The one I, the reason I wanted to show you the ones that we did with Manitoba is because they come in French and English. And the nice part is, is that this one for Secret Path uh, has a mixture of early years, middle years, and senior, right? So we know that we, we also did a different webinar with regards to teaching young children about residential school that used Shishi Etco, which I'll show in a moment. Um, but when you jump into these resources, whether or not it's English and French, the nice thing with these ones is that uh, it gives you kind of the learning outcome and breakdown and then kind of a full um, kind of activation of the lesson plan. Uh, and some are obviously more complex than others. Uh, if we wanted one to, if you wanted to work on ones that were a little bit, um, that are a little bit more uh, plug and play, which means there's less kind of work for you, is this one, I know, I just need to find it. Ah, yeah, the ones we did with Edmonton. And we had to revamp this one a little bit, here we go. Yeah, so this one is, these ones are, this one's kind of designed for middle years, so junior high school. Um, but the nice thing is if you're looking for something that is uh, kind of, uh, just more uh, easy and less less kind of thought and work on your side. It comes down with the full kind of activation of the lesson plan uh, in a systematic format, along with the connections to the resources um, and other things like that. And the nice thing with this one on Edmonton, I know it's in English, um, but it comes with a lovely student workbook. And it also comes with kind of the PowerPoints to use. So it's kind of ready to rock. And the Manitoba one is also like that. And it also comes with uh, in French, which is a which I think is a, a a lovely way to you know if you have students who are French language first, this is a really nice starting point where you can use the Secret Path book, jump into the lesson, and have something ready to rock that is both in French and English for you. Um, so that's kind of the Secret Path lessons, but they're not just limited to just the Secret Path book. We actually zero in on lesson plans for the calendar. Um, and treaties. And we've also gone ahead and we've organized lessons and support for individual months. So we've organized kind of resources for each of the days of significance on the calendar. So someone mentioned about how do we kind of bring in these things on an ongoing basis. This is what I recommend. You can have the calendar up in the classroom. You can have this kind of saved on your computer. 
and do kind of like a wide world of, uh, you know, information or news with regards to what's happening. And you can use this and use our website as kind of the easy search. So you're not using trying to find something that's applicable. It's just right here for you. And you can just choose. And some of this is just news articles to talk about. Some of it is more comprehensive lesson plans, um, but it spans across all the months. Not only did we do it with months, but we also do it by specific grades. So we've um, actually jumped in and separated them by specific kind of grades uh, that we either have built ourselves or we've gone on and we've built it in collaboration. Before I can, uh, actually I'll stay here for a moment. Um, and there's, there's a lot here. And we've also done it by subject area. So French, arts, English, history, and obviously socials and English generally are kind of more um, prevalent, uh, but we are actually building a new system, a new learning management system where we're, where we're building full course plans um, along with unit plans. And this will all be transferring over to a learning management system that you'll have access to when, as long as you sign up for the program. Um, and it'll actually have more comprehensive course plans that are a little bit more scaffolded and it will have this as a resource. So you'll log in and you'd be like, we would know that you're teaching English 10 and you'd have access to the whole course. Um, and then you'd have all these kind of added and you'd be able to kind of toggle what's offered rather than having to kind of sift through this. Um, and we're looking for teachers to collaborate and help us build these resources. So that will be coming in the spring. So if you're someone who's excited or you have a course and you're like, wow, I'd really like to get involved. That's also happening. We also have our education advisory committee, which Stacy is on. Um, you can ask her about the work there, but we use the EAC to go through the resources, have a look at things, and kind of talk about the direction of the um, education department here at uh, Downey Wenjack. Um, so yeah, we've done things by province, and then we've also done it by educational resources of kind of topics. So if you're looking for something in specific, you can kind of scroll through and, and look at that. And then we have a small section on worldwide as well as a reading list. So if you're ever searching for um, things uh, with regards to books that you want to know that they've been quote unquote vetted or kind of approved, again, you know, we always have to be cautious of, you have to be cautious of the pan-Indigenous context. Perhaps you're not going to find a book that works exactly for your region. Perhaps it's close. There's nothing wrong with using books that are not from your community as well, right? In the same way that we teach a variety of English books written by different authors, um, we don't need to specifically teach specific books for specific regions all the time. Um, and obviously these books shift and change based on authors, you know, politics or personal heritage or whatever. It's a very shifting landscape. So we try to do our best to keep this uh, up and active. Um, and, you know, if you see something that is concerning, let us know. We, we welcome, we welcome any uh, feedback. Um, and then we've uh, made a list of kind of larger films, uh, films that you can jump into. Uh, we actually just started chatting with the National Film Board. So there's actually another film that's coming out um, on kind of defending of water rights. Uh, and so there's a whole bunch of things here to kind of speed up your research. We know that the Google machine has steadily gotten worse over time. So you can feel free to use us as a greater um, resource bank. And... The last thing I kind of wanted to show is, is what I've done. What I did was is I've removed some of the teachers, uh, the teacher specific lesson plans into their own toggle. Um, and these ones are generally connected to other resources. So we did one on Monarchia and kind of indigenous solidarity and, and we built uh, a resource. And if you want the documentary, you can fill out this form. Um, and there's actually a lesson plan uh, attached to it. And all the lesson plans we create are translated. So again, uh, if you're in the junior years, we had Nicola Campbell. So we sent out Shisha Yetko uh, this year. Lovely book for K to five with regards to identity and introducing young children about residential school. Um, this is on YouTube. The lesson plan is here. Uh, and as you'll notice, they're kind of broken down, give you the resources, tell you kind of what the objective was. Um, and then we also had another uh, webinar, which was, oh, I don't have it saved up. I'll pull it up in a minute. Um, another lovely webinar on teaching young children about residential school. Um, and these are all kind of the most recent ones. So we did one on Inuit traditions. We did one on, this is the one from Talon here in Lilwat. These were, these were very widely watched. It's one of our, um, oh, another resource. Thank you. Okay. So it looks like there's a lovely tool for assessing Indigenous resources and books. Thank you for that. 
um, yeah, assessment. You can use us as a sounding board, always from the kind of um, educational professional side of things, making sure that you're staying in line with, you know, your leads and your administration and protocol within your school board. Um, but these ones are lovely. The students and other kids seem to really like watching this one. Talon is a pretty impressive young man who's at SFU for archaeology, and he's reinvigorating traditional ecological knowledge. And there's no one in Lilwat that knows it. So he actually found this old book that was written by an archaeologist in the 40s. And he's been using that book and stories to kind of rebuild um, what he can. Uh, some really cool things with sport, if you have... We, uh, if you're working with kids or sport sport oriented or looking or looking for a way to bring things into uh, PE or physical education, um, and then the larger uh, Manitoba Seeker Path lesson plans. This was the teaching young children. If you're if you're junior, if you're K to six, this was a learning circle with teachers that talked about um, how they approach teaching this topic to young children. Um, and again, French and English, pretty nice uh, cocoa magnet done by Harriet. Uh, this one was a lovely conversation with the late Murray Sinclair and lesson plan. This one's pretty suitable for social justice, 10, 11, 12. Um, so yeah, there's lots here. If you're looking for something specific, you can email us and yeah, that kind of rounds it out. Um, I think you've done a wonderful job. Uh, there's a ton of resources there. And I think the point, my intention with having you here is like, I know that sometimes when you're in your classroom, you can feel kind of, or I used to feel kind of isolated and that I didn't have a network of people or that I was always searching for resources independently. And it takes time to vet them and make sure they're mm -hmm. uh, truthful. Um, so I just really, my goal in having everyone here is to uh, kind of realize that we're a huge network and there's tons of people to support you. Like, Chris is here. He has a network. Uh, Learn is here as well. Um, so feel free, please reach out. And we're here to build our collective uh, knowledge, right? Because none of us are experts. We're all working towards truth and reconciliation. And it looks different for everyone. And if we can just share and, you know, exchange, I think that's where uh, how we're going to move forward in a good way. Um, yeah. And we're always open. And, um, you know, one of the exciting things from our end, to get involved with uh, Stacy and learn was we really do want to expand our network uh, into Quebec. We know that, you know, there's a lot of really lovely work there um, and there's a lot of passionate individuals that are excited to kind of fill in these larger learning gaps um, and really kind of move this conversation forward, forward. And I know that there's lots of teachers like yourselves who are, who are waiting and eager and are, would be excited to kind of, you know, build, build their networks. So, you know, the exciting part is on the Downey Wenjack side is to be able to kind of get a little bit more exposure, um, have, make sure that you guys have this in your back pocket and that you can, you know, let everybody and when they see it or let them know that they can sign up for themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can just keep on increasing this larger network and then just keep on sharing Janie's story as, as the principal entrance point to kind of the things that the other types of things we have to offer. Um, just a bit of a timeline, the learning kind of the larger lesson plans, the learning management system, that's a new offering. We're going to be doing a little bit of a pilot with BC teachers, and then we'll be doing slow kind of outreach. So uh, that will be coming. But as as many of you know, things in education go slower than sometimes we would like, but uh, we want to make sure that they're thorough and they're done well, rather than rushing something that doesn't work. Um, but again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, if you're interested in getting involved, um, if you have time as teachers <laughs> on top of your already busy schedule, you can email us or talk to Stacy about kind of EAC involvement or uh, curriculum building. Um, but other than that, that kind of rounds it out for me. Logging off, I just want to share too that we do have a Learn uh, Education for Truth and Reconciliation uh, email list. So if ever you're interested in getting updates about uh, webinars or new resources from Quebec that are coming out, and we have a few resources just available at LEARN um, to support truth and reconciliation. So one of the resources we're very excited to share with all of you is an upcoming four-hour course on truth and reconciliation um, that Rebecca, who is here today, and Drew Apache McDougall um, helped us put together. Uh, the course is going to be available shortly, probably at the end of the month uh, or early December for all educators in Quebec. It's going to be free for uh, all educators, and it really dives into the 11 nations of Quebec and first steps in learning and moving forward uh, in creating truth in your classroom.
Um, some new resources uh, from Quebec that I wanted to showcase um, are the Voices from the Land website. It's a recently produced website by Finec. Um, maybe if anyone's in the chat, if they've ever seen this resource or have used it yet with their class, it just got launched in September. So as you can see, it's a really beautiful website um, put together by Finec, and you can go and discover uh, information about each of the 11 nations in Quebec. The website is bilingual. So for example, if you're interested um, in a nation, you can click on it. It gives you information about its geographical location, links to community websites, as well as language resources. Okay. There is also a really wonderful section of the site on Knowledge Keepers, where you can contact Finec for support. So if you're interested in having somebody come into your classroom, um, you could maybe contact them. And there is measure funding for inviting Indigenous uh, knowledge keepers and artists uh, into your classroom. See a lot of hand clapping. Heart. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys got something out of this. Uh, yeah, again, it's Christopher at downywenjack.ca. Uh, good luck, and I hope you all have a very restful holiday so you can come back and keep up the great work in the new year. Thank One. you, everybody. Cool. Stacey, merci. Merci à tout le monde. Au revoir. Merci. Bye-bye.